Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, this is a, a great day for us to dive into the Word of God uh, and also make it a practice of spending time in prayer. I know that we are in challenging times and that we are battling uh, the COVID-19 virus. But this is a time that we can come together and begin to just draw close, draw near to God and, you know, just pray up and begin to pray and intercede, not just for yourself, but on the behalf of your family. Matthew or Luke 21, 36 says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That was Luke 21, 36. So in this particular passage, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's letting them know to be watchful because when the end times come near, they definitely need to be watchful. And he's exhorting them to pray always. Why do Jesus want us to pray always? Because he do not want us as believers in Christ to succumb to the spirit of fear. We don't want to subject ourselves to the spirit of fear, regardless of who is around us that may be projecting fear. We want to be strong and we want to be courageous, especially in these end times. Are we in the end times? I definitely believe that the end time is coming very near. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, it says, And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and divers places. You know, um, I know that this COVID-19 virus, definitely if you look at it in the natural realm with your and, and you deal with it and within your natural way of thinking, you could easily succumb to fear. But God wants us to keep our eyes focused upon him, knowing that we are definitely protected as believers in Christ. Now, the message that I'm giving to you today is not to frighten you or to increase any fear, but the message is, that as a believer in Christ, that we need to be on guard, we need to be watchful, very prayerful, we need to surrender our hearts completely to the Lord Jesus Christ and praying that God will bless us to escape the things that's coming upon the earth. Now, pestilence, the definition of a pestilence is any epidemic disease that is highly contagious, infectious, virulent, and devastating. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, the pestilence uh, from Numbers chapter 16, let's look at that, Numbers chapter 16. Now, let's look at Numbers chapter 16. Now, the word pestilence, you don't hear that very much because that, that is more of an Old Testament term. Um, back in the old biblical days but pestilence definitely does exist today because there are definitely some pestilence going on in the United States um, other nations so let's look at, at the Word of God from the Old Testament this is Numbers chapter 16 starting at verse 41 it says but on the morrow all the congregation of the Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron saying you have killed the people of the Lord when the congregation was gathered against Moses and Aaron they looked at the tent of meeting and behold the cloud covered it and they saw the Lord's glory and Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting and the Lord said to Moses get away from this congregation that I may consume them in a moment and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. And Moses said to Aaron, 
Take a censer and put fire in it from off the altar and lay incense on it and carry it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. So we see that the anger of the Lord was, was really stared against the nation of Israel because of their mumbling, their grumbling. They were not really grumbling and mumbling against Moses and Aaron, but in fact, they were mumbling against God. So God had his feel of the nation of Israel, and he became very angry at the Israelites, and he wanted to just destroy them. And so Moses and Aaron began to take intervention on the behalf of the congregation or the, the Israelites. It says, so Aaron took the burning censer as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold the plague, here that word is again, the plague or pestilence was begun among the people. And he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. Now those who died in the plague were 14,700, besides those who died in the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned to Moses to the door of the tent of meeting, since the plague was stayed. So we see that how a plague and a pestilence can be released into uh, against a people or, or into the earth realm, the, the atmosphere. So it definitely comes from rebellion. And the scripture says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And so we, as a people of God, we definitely have to uh, examine our hearts, make sure that we are in alignment with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, many things have been going on in this nation for years not just this nation i believe god is shaking the nations and stirring them up trying to get the attention of not just the uh, church but the attention of people worldwide this is a day this is a time that we really need to turn our hearts unto god and repentance brokenness and contriteness so this message is basic, basically a message that we are to uh, watch, we are to pray. If you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a day to surrender your heart to the Lord. So when I say watch and pray, let's go back to uh, Luke 21, chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Not only should we be concerned about our welfare and our physical health in our families, but we want to be most, most importantly concerned about our eternal life with Jesus Christ. We want to really know that we're living according to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his ways and his precepts, so that we can spend the rest of eternal life with Jesus Christ. And so for those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a good day for you to surrender your heart unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to just repeat this prayer after me, those of you that don't know Christ. We acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God, that he came to earth as a man in order to live the sinless life that we cannot live, that he died in our place so that we would not have to pay the penalty we deserve. Father God, I invite Jesus Christ into my life. I confess my past life of sin, living for myself and not obeying God. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I admit 
that I am ready to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. So I ask Jesus to come into my heart, take up residence there, and begin living in this body of mine. And so, Father, I just surrender to you, and I thank you, Lord, for salvation in Jesus Christ. So if you said that prayer and you have accepted Christ into your life, you want to be part of a local church. I know that at this time that we are not gathering together in the local churches, but this is a time but uh, to unite with other strong believers, maybe family members that are already uh, strong believers in Christ, to for you to be disciple, for you to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. So my next video that I will put out will be a prayer concerning uh, COVID-19, the prayer based on Psalms 91. So look forward to the next video. Don't forget to share this video, make comments, like the video, and if you're on my Facebook page, please follow my uh, Cynthia Wilson Embracing His Word and just like and follow so that you'll get my new content. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.